Hey guys, what is up? I hope everybody's been having a great day. We are once again back with another 18 hole vlog, this time at Queenstown Harbor, the Lakes Golf Course. Before you guys do anything, please do me a favor and smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. When you guys like the video, it really helps push it out to more people, it helps me reach more people, helps me entertain more people, and I think that is a great thing. So if you guys could like the video, that would be awesome. So this is a really fun course. I played it a few times before as a junior golfer. So I think we'll have a really good time. It'll be very windy. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for getting us to 140,000 subscribers. I will have a 140,000 subscriber special coming up soon. And uh, let's get into it. So hit a little bit right off the tee here. The three iron, got 111 left. Pins in the right corner. And I think we go with a 54 degree, knock it down a little bit, and uh, put it in the right center of the green. Should have about 10, 15 feet left if we play the way we want to play it. So here's what we got left. Pretty much exactly how I was trying to play it because, you know, even with 110 left being from the rough, it does put in enough variables. That is a little bit of a tight uh, tuck pin right there. So a play out to here, there's nothing wrong with that at all. So now we got just about 15, 20 feet left for birdie. So let's see if we can make it. This is a pretty solid start right there. Really great read. I've been doing aim point a lot more lately and I've really been getting good at feeling out slow percentages. So that's definitely been helping out with the green reading, which has probably been my weakest link lately. So it's really been good to be able to target that. So fold two, it's about 380 yards, pretty straight away. I'm gonna go with a four iron here because it is a little bit of a help win. Just leave myself 100 yards like I did last hole and just keep attacking. So pretty much perfect tee shot here. I have 99 yards left. Pretty front pin there. So it is a bit downwind, and I'm gonna be trying to get a little spin on this ball and we get the hold. So gonna be going the 58 degree wedge, just keeping in mind that I am probably gonna get an extra five to seven yards because of this wind. And yeah, we're really gonna be attacking here. So a really solid shot here. I actually landed that right there. That wind really knocked it down, but really was able to play that well and give it some good touch. So really nice to see 98, 100 yard wedge shots getting this close to the pin. Definitely been working on it a lot. So see if you can roll it in. So on hole three, pretty solid start there. Another really good putt. Putted absolutely no break in it. Hole three, 160 yards, par three obviously. Good into the wind, and I'm gonna be hitting an eight iron here. Trying to hit the knockdown shot, I'm working a lot on this shot, so let's see if we can get the payoff. So unfortunately, I pushed it a bit right, but not a terrible leave. Got plenty of green to work with. So let's see if we can get this all the way back there. So pretty good par save there. Um, I've actually been bringing a level with me. Um, so after I hit the putts, I've been kind of reading to confirm what my percentage had, my, my percentages were for the slope. And I've been within 
two or three tenths of a percent pretty much every time today. That's why I'm making a lot of putts. Um, check out any point, guys. It's really good for putting. It gives you great reads and almost 90% of pros use it for a reason. So really liking that. On to the next little hole four. And I got a little history of this hole, actually. This is the hole, kind of brings back memories, actually. As a kid in uh, high school, my golf team, this is probably one of the days I look forward to the most is I got to get out of school early. And I would be hitting on a tee for this outing for my school, raising money for the golf team. So it's kind of cool to come back here. It's been like six or seven years. So it's crazy how time flies. But um, the dog leg right, par five, a little over 500 yards. Now, I'm gonna be hitting a four iron, maybe a three iron. However, I know you guys want to see me hit a driver. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit drivers for up, just a for fun shot to see what happens. Who knows where it'll go, <laughs> but it's worth giving it a shot. Um, I'll play my three or four iron first, and then we'll send it to the driver. And we'll see where it ends up. So here's my three iron. You can actually see my dad's actually going up to find my driver. It's just through the fairway up there. So that was actually turned out to be pretty good. That drive probably only has about 130 left, maybe to depend. So probably about 370, 380. Not too bad for fairly early in the day. It's it's noon, so I'm still a little a little tired in the head. Um, but we're gonna have about 215 left on this shot. Perfect position. Absolutely right where we want to be. And we'll go find that second ball after I hit this shot, and we'll let you give, let you know how far I win, what I have left. Smash the like button if you guys want to see me do that more often, because I know it's been an issue where I know I play my best when I'm a tactician and I play for placement. Obviously, that doesn't really jive with hitting at 400 yards. I know you guys want to see me hit it, send it on every tee shot. So I'm that is something I think would be a great way to kind of get make everybody happy. So I'm going to try to do that in as many holes as possible, hit a driver and hit an iron, just so you guys can see the comparison. So let me know if you guys would like to see that more often. So we're gonna have about 215, as I said. Wind's a little more to my side, so I'm probably gonna let this go a little higher, just to kind of have it arc in and, you know, land softly, so probably a seven iron. So just put it just left of the pin and we should have a putt for a three. So here's my ball ended up. Let's see, got about 140 left, just a little bit through the fairway here. So, would have had about a wedge in. All right, guys. So, yeah, got caught by the wind a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. Pretty rough fly here. Lost about 20 yards from the wind. You can see the pin up there. Hit a great shot right at it, right where I wanted to hit. Just goes to show why I've been putting so much effort into hitting the ball lower, because you just cannot play when, I mean, it's windy up there. It's probably. 10 to 15 up there. You just can't play with a shot that high when it's over about eight miles an hour because you just never know what the wind's gonna do up there. So that's why I've been working on flighting it lower. So let's see if we can uh, hit a good shot here and get up and down. Alright guys, so that was, a, that was a pretty good up and down there. Honestly, I feel like I stole one there because that was a brutal lie. You guys saw it. The tip there, with the, with the slope being like that, tilt your shoulders upward to the slope and just stab down on it. Try to catch the ball as clean as possible. And you kind of got to get a little lucky too to hit that close. But that's the best way to kind of get out of a situation like that and um, yeah, get away with one. So another really solid hole there. Um, again, it's all about, you know, of overcoming adversity and managing shots and I hope that little tidbit helps you out helps you guys out when you guys get in some really high rough and some really deep trouble on hole five we have a dog leg left it ends the fairway ends at about 250 we do have a bit of a hurt wind here from the right so I'm gonna go ahead and hit a four iron and uh, get us in play should have about 150 left if we hit a good four iron So 
a pretty good shot in here. Got 183 left to the pin, which is in the front. Wind's definitely picking up um, very, very significantly now. So that's going to be a factor the rest of the day. And so I'm probably going to go with a six iron here and hit a 70% shot and cut it through this wind. Um, so let's see if we can hit it in there pretty close. Now guys, look closely. See this deer right there? See if I can get a different angle on them. There's Bambi. So that was an awesome shot. Shots like that really get me excited because I've been working so hard on hitting these flighted shots. You know, I know the flag's not moving, but I promise you, like, up above these trees there, it is whipping, especially when I hit that shot. So that's always something I've struggled with. So to be able to hit it for like 190 and have that kind of control over the ball flight and, you know, that control over the spin, yeah, that's a big win for me because being someone who has a lot of speed, that's obviously going to be a big struggle. And the more I can get that speed and spin and ball flight under control, the more options I'm going to have because it's always a great thing to be able to hit a seven iron, you know, 215, 220 and bring it in from 180 feet in the air if there's no wind and you want to stop it. But being able to have the versatility to then play ball with, you know, heavier winds that require different trajectories, that's a huge advantage. So it's pretty exciting to see that I'm starting to hit shots like that more often. Swan hole six, it's about a 380 yard par four dog leg right. Let's see, it's probably the line we'd take taking right out there. And um, I'll send another one with the driver. I know you guys are probably wanting me to hit that, so we'll see if we can drive the green, but for my actual shot, I'm gonna first hit probably a three iron, just get myself in play, and then we'll hit with the driver and see where that ends up. So once again, middle of the fairway here, 113 left, a little bit of a tailwind. Still gonna use a 54 degree. I think we'll still, we should have enough spin to hold it. As for the drive, I am not sure. I have a suspicion it might have crept into that pond right there, but we're gonna take a look. If we can't find it, that's probably where it went. It was just left of the green, but obviously, you know, you guys always ask me, well, Kyle, why don't you drive? Why don't you drive? Or, well, this is why. Look at the space I have here at 115 out. Look at all that room. And then you can see up here how tight it gets. And that's, you know, that's a 360 yard shot. It's very hard to fit it into a 20 yard wide gap. So that's really, when I mean, you want to, you want to play the percentages when you play golf, especially when you have 18 holes. So we got 113 left. Give me hitting a 54 degree in there. Let's see if we can knock close. So it looks like it's definitely in this water. It was, and guys, that was not a bad tee shot at all. That was maybe 10 yards left of my target line, which, you know, 140 club speed, that's a very, very tight dispersion. But it just kind of goes to show, you know, if I, if I hit driver, you know, right now I'd be dropping, trying to get up and down for par, but playing three iron, you know, I have a very, very makeable putt for birdie from like maybe 10 feet. So, you know, that's why I always like to play safe off the tee because I know I have the distance whenever I need it but I would much rather get into play first and then just kind of play my way through the round now to be sure for example like Torrey Pines this week at the US Open I'd probably be hitting driver 10 or 12 times but on courses that are tighter where I don't absolutely need driver I'm gonna be much more inclined to hit something that gets me a play because I, I do believe in the rest of my game you know I know it's a running joke to say long drivers have no short game but I'll be honest I believe in my short game. I believe in my ability to get the ball in the hole, you know, and so I, I trust that ability and I'm willing to trust that ability more than I think most people might think, especially it's hard to market on it. So 
I will definitely break it out though. Five to 600 yards straight away, par five with a lot of room. You can bet I'll be sending it. So here's my pitch mark here. See if I can show you guys where it landed. Right there. So got a nice little skip up and really solid touch here with all that wind going on. So let's see if we can roll this putt in. All right, guys, so forget everything I just said. Um, this is actually where my ball ended up. So you can imagine, this actually might not be that terrible. You know, you got the shot right there, but it's definitely not gonna be a shot that will uh, keep you from growing many white hairs. Um, so again, it looks like I'm pin high. You know, you guys can do the math there. A little bit past pin high. But again, you know, it's never really, you know, especially in a hole like this. It's, it's, it's definitely more risk than reward. But, so you guys, we did find that ball. Yeah, that was definitely it. It actually hit the tree. You can actually see, hit some tree right there, so. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty solid hole. Really rolling the rock well. That was another perfect read. Uh, checked my um, slope reading on that after I hit the putt, and I had it at right about 1%, and it was 0.8, so it's about, that's right where we wanna be. Um, so playing pretty well today. Really nice to see the putting come together and the wedges and all that good stuff. Really working hard on it. Um, and I hope you guys are enjoying seeing these drives too. I know they're, I know that uh, you guys want to see me hit more drives. And so I think it's a good way to kind of get that in for you guys while still playing golf, I guess you could say. So let's move on to the next hole. So on to hole seven, it's about a three, 350, not a super long hole, but it's into the wind. And um, see the bunker out there on the left. So, gonna be laying back a bit, hitting six iron here, getting in play first things first. And uh, don't worry, we will send one at the green and uh, we'll see where that goes. But um, gonna get in play the six iron and uh, see where we end up. That's where I want to leave it here, just short of this bunker, which gives me all of this fairway to hit into. At 140 to a very small green, pins in the back edge. And I'm gonna go with a nine iron here, knock it down, and try to put the center of the green, give myself maybe 15, 20 feet left for a three. Well, a bit long left. I actually had a second shot there, so you can see I corrected it a little bit. That is not a big green at all, but um, definitely didn't hit a good shot there. A little bit left, pulled it a little bit, and you know, that's another knockdown shot. And the biggest thing I'm working on with a knockdown shot is learning how to time the face, because the one good thing about a full swing is you kind of have a very consistent in range of motion. And when you take it back less than full, you know, it's, you gotta learn that new spot where you take it back to. So I'm still learning that, but it is getting tighter every day in terms of dispersion. So that's really cool to see. So see if we can get up and down. So unfortunately, I couldn't find the ball for the driver, but my guess is it's somewhere over there, you know, and that's just obviously, I've said it many times, but it's fun to hit driver, but it can be very tough on these shorter, tighter courses to really take full advantage of it. So um, again, I'll keep doing it. It is fun to hit driver hard, but it's also a good learning lesson. You know, you guys can see like how hard it would be for me to play a driver on certain courses. And that's why I'm always, you know, not hitting it too much. So anyway, Really get up and down there. Happy to be walking away at the four after that approach shot. Can't make all your shots perfect, but you can always make your next shot better. So now into the next hole, hole eight. And guys, this is hole eight, but I wanna make a point here. See that flag? It's not really moving that much. And then you can look up here and you can see how much more of the trees are moving up there. 
like at the very tops versus down there. And that's what makes these uh, very tree line courses pretty tough sometimes because they're very deceiving. You can feel like there's just no wind and then you hit a shot and then it's 30 yards short out of nowhere. So you really gotta look at the tops of trees. Whenever you're playing a course that has very, a lot of tree line, look at the top of the tree. That's your true metric for how windy some, a shot is. So keep that in mind. Hole eight, par three, 165 yards to the front pin. And then I'm gonna go with a seven iron here, flight it low and see if we can hit it close. All right, well, I'm in some serious trouble. I don't know if you guys can even see that. That literally rolled in by about less than six inches. That took such a hard kick right off of this right there. Absolutely horrendous bounce, so. Yeah, it's gonna be a really tough shot. I can get a club on it, so. The goal here is really just to get this, on the green would be phenomenal. If we can get this just advanced to an easy shot position to get up and down, that's really all we're trying to do here. All right, guys, that was a phenomenal shot. Like, I landed that right there, and this thing ran, ran, ran. And it I thought it might stop here, but it just kept running. But I'm not going to be greedy. To even have a putt at a, four, a three is awesome from there, because I know you guys saw that lie. Absolute jail. So that's what game's about. You're going to hit bad shots, and you kind of just got to stay with it. This game tends to reward those who put up with its, you know, BS a lot. So... Um, if you can put up with golf's BS better than others, you're probably going to play better as well. So always keep that in mind when you have crap that happens to you, because it will happen to you. So let's see if we can roll this putt in. All told, told, not a bad four from where I hit that shot. Um, so, on the hole nine, par four, 330 yards. And again, I'll go for this. I'll probably go for this with a two iron. Um, gonna put a five iron in play like I normally would. And then we'll send that at the green to two iron and we'll see if we can hit it on the green. So pretty much perfect here, 100 yards left, right where we want it. And I believe my iron shot's a little bit short up there. We'll definitely locate it for you guys so you guys can see where it ended up and see what I would have had in. So I'm gonna be hitting a 58 degree wedge here. We have a bit of help. So I'm gonna play this about 93, 92 and let the, let the ball and the wind kind of get knocked down. So um, let's see if we hit a good shot. All right guys, and here's where my iron shot ended up. I actually did miss hit that a little bit. It was a really tough yardage because driver would have, driver would have been into that barn right there. And um, two iron, if I peered it, would have been right up there, which is definitely a fine spot to be. Looking back, the reason I didn't hit a two iron, hit a five iron instead, is see that car path right there? Left of that is OB, and I mean, that comes unbelievably close once you start getting close to that green. You can't miss much more than 15, 20 yards left, and when you're talking about a 320 yard shot, it's really hard to ensure that uh, you're not gonna miss more than that far left. So, as it stands, this is our birdie putt right there from the 100 yard shot. So let's see if we can hit a good putt. All right, so that was a pretty good three there. One caveat though, I read that slope at about 1.8% and in reality it was 2.5. I actually pushed my putt a little bit and hit it a bit firm as you guys probably saw, so I got away with one there. But that's the beauty of being really attentive with the green reading is sometimes if you're really solid with it, 
a mist can still go in, so that felt pretty good. Now to hole 10, about 410, gonna be hitting a three iron. And uh, we'll hit a driver as well, see how close we can get to that green. So here's where my uh, tee shot went, the three iron. I actually think my driver's somewhere on that green over there. I melted that, but I pulled it a bit left and that's definitely wet. So, you know, just another example of what I was talking about earlier, but we got 140, that would have probably been green side if I had to guess also, um, but it doesn't help if it's green side, 15 feet underwater. So we got 142 here, pretty good lie. We do have a tree here. It won't be an issue hit over, but what it does mean is I'm gonna have to hit it a bit higher than I would like with this wind. So I'm going to go with a 9-iron and just try to kind of float it over that tree and keep this flight as soft as possible without putting too much spin on it. <laughs> Guys, I don't know what to say. Um, this is an impossible shot. Like this is, just to give you an idea, this is my hip right here, and it's coming up basically to my hip. I mean, this is absolutely stupid. Um, had no clue this is back here, went a bit long. Wow. This is why it's really important to do practice rounds because if I knew this was back here, knowing I had a fly or lie, zero chance I would have been that aggressive with my, my approach shot there. So that was right at the pin, it landed just over the green, like a foot long and just took a massive hop, so. I'm gonna try to hack this out. I don't know how I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna try. All right guys, so I got it out to here somehow by some miracle. That was about a foot away from being one of the best shots I've ever hit in my life. So, man, that was close. So let's see if we hit a good chip. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little salty about that hole. Um, I didn't hit a great second shot, but you know that's 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 what happens when you don't do practice rounds and you because you know that is I probably put that in if you had to pick five spots you can't be on this golf course. That was probably one of those five. I mean that stuff was up to my hip. I I cannot stress enough how much of a miracle shot that third shot was. I don't know how I even got that out of that stuff, almost on the green. I hit a good putt, just didn't quite break as much as I thought and caught the lip, but is what it is, that's the game. You can have crap happen to you, especially if, I am somewhat familiar with this course, but not like much at all. Like it's been eight years since I played this course. I know they've changed it up a little bit. So it is what it is on the whole 11, 154 yard par three, pins in the front edge. We have a pretty big hurting wind here. So I'm probably gonna go with a seven iron and knock this one down a lot and see if we can get on the green, give yourself a chance for it too. Guys, so here's where I ended up right here. A little bit wide right. Hit a second shot and made the adjustment a little bit better, this knockdown shot. That's really what I've been working on all really hard is getting that line right. I'm still struggling with it a little bit, but it's, as I said, it's getting a little better every day. So I think I'm gonna hit a 54 degree wedge here, land it just on the green, let it run up and curl up to the pin. Guys, on a hole 12, that was a pretty good par save back there. I'll take that any day of the week. Um, on a hole 12, par five, gonna be going 
right over this car path to the three iron and we'll send driver on this line see what that gets us and uh yeah see what we can do Well, here's my tee shot of the three iron. Really good shot here at the left center. Gonna be hitting another three iron at that flag. Got just over 250. The 250 plate is right there. So this pin appears to be in the middle. As for my driver, I don't know if it made it back over this. It was a little low, but it was not a bad tee shot. There's, there's just not a lot of room up there. We'll see if we can find it, but um, we got three iron coming up. Let's see if we can hit a good shot. Well, pulled a bit left, was pin high, so it was the right number. Let's see, pin right there. Got a little bit of green to work with, so just gonna try to pop this up at the 58 and uh, see if we can get it close. So a bit of a disappointing five there. Had the right read, just pulled that putt a little bit. But now we're on to hole 13, the longest part four of the day. I'm gonna be hitting a two iron off the tee and we'll also hit driver, see how far we can get it up on that fairway and we'll go from there. All right, so just right this car path, I actually hit that rock and it bounced all the way back here. So that's definitely a bit of a weird feature on this course. So a little over 150, probably about 160 to the pin. You can take a pitching wedge, knock it down a bit and let it run up to the pin. And also the, my driver's probably in that water there, unfortunately. So that's probably where I think that ended up. Here's what I got left here. I'm gonna be hitting the putt through the fringe here. See if we can get some good touch and maybe even give this a run at going in. So that was a pretty good two putt right there for a four. That was definitely not the easiest par four by any means. So now on a 14, about 400 yards, a bit downwind here. Bit of a weird little hole bends to the left a bit. Gonna be taking a four iron right at those carts right there and see if we can get it in play. It's a pretty solid shot in here, left center of the fairway. 135, pins a little bit uphill. Gonna hit the 48 degree wedge, take a little bit off it because it is gonna be a bit downwind. And uh, this pin, it looks like it's on a cliff on the right edge of that green. Look how close that looks to the edge there. So I'm gonna play that a bit left and try to give myself about a 10, 15 footer. Not a terrible shot here, just a bit short, but definitely gives me a pretty easy uphill putt. There's actually a pretty cool little view here of the uh, Chesapeake Bay out there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's quite a big body of water. And uh, that is why it tends to be windier out here. There's definitely not a lot stopping, you know, the wind from blowing through this course. So it definitely can make this course play a little tougher, but it is good for me to play in wind because obviously that is something that I'm really working on shoring up as a weakness. And it's definitely, good to test myself against it. So we got about, as I said, about 20 feet straight up the hill. Let's see if we can make it.
All right, guys, so we're on hole 15, and there's actually, I don't know if you can see, but there's a couple deer there staring back at me. See them right there? It's getting pretty close. This is buddy. So, on hole 15, par 5, absolutely impossible to really cut any of that water out. It's very tight. So, I'm going to be taking a four iron right at that waste bunker and get us some play and go from there. Split the middle of fairway here, really good shot on this hole. Pin is way back there. I'm gonna be going for this with the two iron. It's gonna be a pretty big hit here, but I think we can get at least very close. So it's time to send it and see if we can get it up there. So just a bit short and left, but honestly that was a very, very good leave considering water is right over there. And pretty good angle into the screen. So gonna be hitting a 54 degree wedge. Just try to get it to run up onto that shelf and give ourselves a really good look at a four. Okay, so that was a really good four. Really solid hole all the way through down to that four foot putt. That was a really tough putt because I could not for life me figure out if that was a left or right slope, but it ended up, I put it level down after I hit the putt. I think it was zeroed out. So those are always tough, but you always just want to pick a side of the hole and just kind of favor it, even if it's a straight putt. So actually, I'm going to take a look at the video, but I think that took a little bit of a, a bounce, like a spike mark or something. But either way, it went in. We got a four on a hole 16. 370 yards. You can be hitting a three iron just right of those bunkers. Just gonna put it around that bunker there and right up the shoot in that fairway and get us off to a good start. All right, guys, so we're in a bit of the high stuff. We got a really good draw with this lie. Probably payback for what I had to face on hole 10 and hole, I think it was four. So we got 100 yards here, 103 to be exact. The whole goal here is just to get that in the middle of the green and get us putting and give us a shot at a three here. So we're gonna be giving it a rip at the 58 degree. Okay, so we went a bit long, but not a bad leave here. Try to land it right there at the 58, let it check up and see if we can knock this in. All right, so that was a pretty solid uh, four there. For a second, I thought that might have a chance to run into the hole, but it checked up a little bit. So I settled for a tap in four. And now on hole 17, 200 yards to the flag, playing up in the front. Gonna be hitting a five iron here to keep it under the wind. See if we can hit a good shot. This was not a bad leave at all, especially from 200 yards. Yeah, and that was really cool. I was actually pretty happy with that shot because typically I would have really struggled with that shot because it's about 15 above these trees now. It's really whipping. So if I tried to hit an eight iron probably, which I, I would have hit from 200, who knows where that ball would have gone once it got above these trees. So it was really cool to see the ball flight was so quality there and it really, really was flying true and on its the way on its own. So that was really cool to see. So. I think we're probably going to play a 54 here. It's a little bit of too much fringe for me to hit a putter here. And we'll see if we can get it up and down.
All right, guys, well, we've made it. Hole 18, 360, looks like 68 yard par four. Bit of a dog leg to the right. And uh, maybe we're sending it right up the middle of that shoot with the four iron. And we will also go for the green, see where we can put it with the driver as well. All right guys, so a really solid tee shot here, 92 yards left. Pin is in the center, maybe slightly towards the front. My drive is, I don't know if you can see it, it's like way up on that mound back there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like right at the top there, it looks like. So a little bit left, but honestly, you know, I'm not too worried about that because this is actually my long drive head, so it's a little bit flattened because of all the hits I've put on it. So I'm gonna be putting in a new one and it'll be working good as new. So we should be good to go on that front. So it's not really a reflection of the driver performance at all. So that's just what happens when you have a lot of speed. You gotta chuck heads in and out because you gotta have thinness of the face so you can get a lot of ball speed, but you also want a certain thickness to hold it up. So we're still trying to find that middle ground, but overall it's been a great head, awesome driver head. We just gotta put a new one on and I'm sure everything will be going straight again. So at 92 yards left, 93 yards left. And I'm gonna be going in there with a 54 degree because there is a lot of wind up there. So I wanna make sure I flight it under that. Well, I'll be honest, I don't really know what happened there, honestly. I think I just caught it a little light, trying to fly it under wind. I didn't take enough swing, so see if we can get up and down. All right, guys, so that was all 18 holes at Queenstown Harbor Golf Links. The late course, not a terrible round. I feel pretty good about how I played. It was very windy, um, so that was definitely a challenge for me, but I kept it pretty tight and uh, didn't get out of my out of the way too much with what I was doing. Um, got in, I think I got into the hay like three or four times, but we got out of it. Had a few rocky holes here and there, but I think we still finished under par, which is pretty solid. Um, this is not an easy course, especially this is definitely not a course that fits my game, which is why I like playing it, because it's a big challenge, you know, it forces me to hit shots I'm not used to hitting, like knockdown shots. I'll tell you right now, I've been working my butt off on my knockdown shot and on my putting, my green reading. I really think they were solid today. I didn't really play great, but I scored really well. And it's really nice to be able to come in with a really good score, despite not feeling that solid all day. Um, and I guess that's what happens when you make, you know, your 10 to 15 footers and you don't do things stupid. So I was a pretty solid round. Really like how my game's progressing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I love making these. And if you guys keep liking the video, I'll, if you guys keep liking the videos, I'll keep posting them. So that being said, I'll see you guys next time.